Let's look at two children, one from a middle-income family, the other from one of the millions of low-income American families. As the two kids head off to kindergarten, look what happens. The middle-income child starts out with a six-month lead. The low-income child is already falling behind because of a lack of access to early reading and preschool education. During their year in kindergarten, in the same school and classroom, the two children will learn at about the same rate, so we'll move them both forward nine months. But look what happens in that first summer between kindergarten and first grade. Our middle-income child moves ahead about a month in reading because learning of one kind or another continues over the summer. The low-income child falls back about two months. So when school begins again, when they go back for first grade, the gap between them has already widened. During first grade, again, they move ahead at about the same rate, another nine months. That next summer, the activities and lifestyle of the middle-income family keep that child moving forward. But the low-income child has fewer opportunities to reinforce good habits like reading, and that child falls farther behind. Then we come to second grade, and again, our two children learn at the same rate. But the summer after second grade sets our low-income child back again, and our middle-income child moves forward again, and the gap widens again. By just the third grade, the two children are already far apart. By the end of fifth grade, the gap between the children is two and a half to three years. It will keep growing through middle school. So you see, without addressing what's happening during the summer, it is impossible to ever catch up. It's impossible to close the gap. No matter how much high-quality learning goes on from September to June, every year the gap widens.